Our final speaker of this session is Josh Greer. He's going to, the title of his talk is Cable Blood Flow Distribution in Photan Circulation Comparison Between ASL Measured Pulmonary Perfusion and 4D Flow. And his mentor is Anant Madarantakam. Thank you for the introduction. The Fontaine procedure is performed in children with congenital heart defects that result in only a single ventricle functioning. So this operation routes venous blood from the IVC and the SVC directly to the pulmonary arteries, bypassing the right heart. This resulting Fontaine circulation is associated with increased development of pulmonary arteriovenous malformations, or AVMs, where abnormal connections are made between the arteries and the veins, rather than the blood reaching the capillaries to be oxygenated. This is thought to be caused by the possible uneven distribution of venous hepatic flow, uh, which can occur when the IVC and SVC are offset like this. So the IVC contains some currently unknown hepatic factor that when excluded from a lung uh, seems to be a risk factor for AVM development. Uh, so in this example, if the IVC flows towards the left lung, the right lung would be at increased risk. And this is supported by Fontan revisions to more evenly redistribute this flow, uh, resulting in the regression of these AVMs. So existing methods to evaluate the risk for AVM development uh, require invasive measures and exposure to ionizing radiation. Uh, so the cable flow direction can be monitored with selective angiography requiring catheterization, and the resulting lung perfusion can be measured with perfusion scintigraphy, uh, but a non-invasive MRI-based technique would be beneficial for these pediatric patients. So recently, 4D flow has been applied to non-invasively measure this uh, differential IVC flow. Um, but this scan time and post-processing can both be very time-consuming, and uh, this also doesn't provide us with a, a lung perfusion measurement. So the goal of this project was to measure that IVC flow direction as well as quantitative pulmonary perfusion using arterial spin labeling, and we compare these measurements with 4D flow. So arterial spin labeling is a perfusion MRI technique that uses water in the blood as endogenous contrast. With this technique, we acquire a control image with the inflowing blood left at equilibrium and a label image where we invert the inflowing blood. So the difference between these images is proportional to their perfusion into our imaging plane. Since we're only imaging water in the blood, this technique does not require a contrast injection, and we can also use it to create quantitative perfusion maps, uh, which would be beneficial for monitoring patients over time. So there are several different ASL techniques with uh, different approaches to inverting this inflowing blood, uh, but we applied these two specific techniques, FAIR and PCASL, in this project. Uh, so I'll explain what those are on the next slides. So FAIR is an ASL technique that has been established for lung perfusion imaging. Uh, it consists of saturation pulses and a labeling inversion pulse centered on our imaging plane, a post-labeling delay to allow that labeled blood to perfuse the tissue, and then finally our acquisition. In our control image, we apply a selective inversion pulse, and in our label image, a non-selective inversion. And then after that post-labeling delay, we acquire our images in the same plane. And the difference between these images is proportional to the blood flow from this wider inversion region into our imaging plane. And we can subtract them and create a perfusion-weighted image like this. Uh, so we could use this technique to uh, measure pulmonary perfusion following a Fontan operation, um, but since this signal originates from just anywhere outside of our imaging plane, uh, we don't know whether it came from the SVC or the IVC. Uh, so there's another technique, PCASL, that we can use to specifically label an inflowing vessel. So using this train of RF pulses with this uh, selection gradient, we create this labeling plane that will invert blood flowing perpendicularly through the plane. And for our control sequence, we phase cycle the RF pulses for a net result of no inversion on the inflowing blood. So we've applied this technique in normal circulation uh, by labeling the IVC so that labeled blood will first mix in the right heart before splitting and going to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. So in normal circulation, this can give an even distribution of uh, blood flow, uh, blood, labeled blood signal between the lungs, and we've uh, compared this with uh, fair perfusion. Um, but in Fontan circulation, applying the same labeling approach, we can get a direct measure of this differential IVC flow by looking at the resulting lung perfusion. So we've implemented these sequences on a 1.5T Philips Ingenia and have scanned 19 patients around 15 years old, and we also acquire a separate proton density weighted image for quantification. 
the uh, fair total perfusion image is acquired in a single breath hold, and that takes 18 seconds. And the peak acyl IVC contribution is acquired with more signal averages, and we can acquire those in three and a half minutes. So we also acquire 4D flow to compare with those uh, differential flow measurements. Uh, this sequence is acquired with 24 sagittal slices across the junction of those major vessels here, and this takes about 15 minutes. And post-processing was performed in GT flow, and this can also easily take 15 to 30 minutes per subject. So here are a couple example <clears throat> subjects I have to show. This is fair perfusion, showing total perfusion to this coronal slice, and PCASL showing only the IVC contribution, in this case, appearing to be evenly distributed between the lungs. Uh, we also see a labeling artifact below the diaphragm here caused by that labeling plane. With 4D flow, we can draw ROIs over the SVC and the IVC and generate these flow path lines uh, to visualize the flow distribution uh, from each of these vessels. So in this case, the blue IVC flow also appears to be evenly distributed between the lungs. So to quantify this, we can draw ROIs over the lungs in PCASL and just look at the ratio of the measured perfusion. And in 4D flow, we can count the particles arriving through the RPA and the LPA that originated from the IVC. So again, in this case, uh, both ASL and 4D flow agreed that the IVC flow was pretty evenly split between the lungs. In another case, the PCASL IVC contribution showed that the IVC flowed almost entirely to the right lung, and we see very little of that labeled blood arriving in the left lung. And 4D flow also agrees, showing that blue IVC flow going mainly through the RPA. And the quantification also shows uh, that agreement about the differential flow towards the right lung. So these are the results across all of our subjects. This is the percent of IVC flow towards the right lung measured with 4D flow and with ASL, uh, showing good agreement. Uh, with ASL, uh, the percent of IVC flow towards the right lung ranged from 28 to 71% and across all subjects. And with 4D flow, that range was 36 to 78%. Uh, so we do see a wide range of flow towards the left and the right lung. So it does vary from uh, evenly split at 50%. Bland-Altman analysis showed a relatively low bias of 4% between ASL and 4D flow. So we've demonstrated a non-invasive, non-contrast measurement of both pulmonary perfusion and those differential IVC flow measurements using arterial spin labeling. Uh, this technique, which poses no additional risk to the pediatric patients, has the potential to provide a longitudinal Fontan evaluation to, uh, to evaluate risk for AVM development. Future work on this project will include creating 3D perfusion maps to more accurately assess perfusion across the entire lung, and uh, this should also improve our measurement of that differential IVC flow as well. And we'd also like to correlate those differential flow measurements with AVM development in uh, future patients um, and see if our results agree with what has been previously published. Okay, I'd like to thank my lab mates, and I'll take any questions you have now. Any questions for Josh? Yeah, Julia. You know, the thing is, they're kids, though, right? Yeah. And you said that the imaging takes 20 minutes or so, and maybe the post-processing, maybe it's probably very sensitive to artifact. Mm -hmm. So this is a general anesthesia technique right now, probably. Actually, since they were around 15 years old, we actually, oh, any okay. of these we didn't have to. We ha Since okay. then, we have scanned a few under anesthesia. Though. Yeah, okay. So like a teenager would be fine, but yeah. a younger kid, maybe that you're still doing post-operative assessment or something like that, right. maybe a little bit more of an issue. Great, thank you. <laughs> Cut them off. <laughs> that was really very nice work. And um, I think, my, uh, in, in order to get your perspective on which technique might be more useful in the long run, um, the 4D flow has the advantage of laying out the surgical anatomy 
uh, that's causing that redirection of flow. And the, the surgeons, at least at our institution, are really interested in that so they can plan how to revise the Fontan to reduce the flow. Can you comment on how your uh, surgical colleagues are interpreting that? Um, I don't know about any colleagues, but um, I think the... I think the ASL acquisition could be used for maybe follow-ups and like maybe looking at like how a treatment is uh, affecting, not treatment, I guess, a surgical revision a after the fact. You could look at how the uh, flow is redistributed um, if you wanted to look at perfusion as well. Um, and I assume the fair technique with the breath holds took a lot less time. Did you get similar numbers or did you see an effect of the breath holds on the perfusion? to each lung. Well, so the fare only shows the total perfusion into the slice. It doesn't tell you anything about that, the IVC flow. Uh, so that's why we use the PCASL labeling. It does take less time. Yeah. Yes. Um, There's a question in the back there. <clears throat> Very nice work. Uh, I was wondering, uh, these scans are done in supine position, I'm assuming. And obviously, we can't tell what's going on in the physiologic standing position. But do you have any sense of any variability with Lateral, lateral, the acuities, for example, right and left uh, positions? I'm sorry, variability in does, what? In the change of the flow to the right lung. Does it change when you uh, have the patient on the right or left lateral acuities? You can go decubitus, and then people have done this mm -hmm. with PSL, and they go on their side. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and the question is, does the flow appear to change whether you're doing it on your right side or your left side? Or I got those reversed, right side, left side. <laughs> that is a good question. Maybe we can try that. <laughs> After we it's actually yeah. been done in, in adults. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, thank you, Josh.